Hey everybody, good morning, good morning, good morning. I hope that you all are well and your families are blessed. This is Christina with the Momathon Diaries, your productivity coach here today. Um, in spite of everything that has been happening um, in our family, um, here today to talk about taking the day off. Take the day off. Um, we have been doing this book study for the last month at least, uh, talking all about um, the thoughts, principles, and practicality um, that comes from uh, this book, Take the Day Off by Pastor Robert Morris. And it's really been a blessing to me and to my family, especially as we've been navigating uh, the pandemic, being an entrepreneur family, being a homeschooling family, all of these things really pair together, helping me to establish what is most important. Okay, what's most important? And so uh, I've been working through this, of course, with the ladies in our reset coaching program. Um, and uh, I've been instituting the principles from here with my one on one clients as well. Because listen, who doesn't want to take more days off? And you don't want to feel guilty about taking those days off. You want to be able to walk fully into everything that God has for you, getting more done, being more productive, being uh, able to execute with strength without feeling overwhelmed, without feeling like you're burned out all the time. And so this book jumped off the shelf to me um, in... Ollie's. I don't know if everybody has an Ollie's like we do here in Montgomery, but it literally jumped off the shelf to me and made such a lasting impact. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, everyone. I mean, it made a lasting impact on me to the point where I have started to include this in our coaching program, include it in working with my clients, whether you take an hour or you take, um, we partner together for months consecutively. Um, this is a part of, of, of me now. The biblical principles in this book have changed my life, okay? And so I'm going to do a little bit of review about what we have talked about um, in the past. I'm going to do a little bit of a review. And then we're also going to dive in and talk about what's next. And the next part is, hi, Lude. Good morning. Good morning, ladies. Um, and then we're going to go into our next chapter, which is called, Who Has Time to Rest? Who has time to rest? I coined this live today, are you addicted to busy? Because I think a lot of us are. I think a lot of us are addicted to busy. Hold on, I'm about to grab my coffee because this is going to be good. Um, I'm sorry for starting a few minutes late. We had um, multiple passings in our family last week in the same day. In the same day. Good morning. So we, um, I was on the phone with our pastor's daughter and just trying to um, connect with her and see how we could help. And so she asked me and my husband to do some things for the funeral. Listen, we just been joyously um, celebrating life, you know, and all the more principles like this are important. Even more principles like this are important, okay? So I'm going to get myself situated today. Uh, I'm going to take a deep breath, you know, because, uh, yeah. Thank you, Michelle. She said, praying for you. I appreciate your prayers. Um, you know, it's been a challenging weekend. It's been a challenging weekend. Just now have we hit the place where we can, you know, kind of function and not fall apart. It was It was one of those weekends, okay? So we're going to get our process started. Hello, hello, everybody who's on Instagram or Facebook or wherever you're watching. We are glad that you're here, okay? Um, if you have a girlfriend, a sister girl who is, um, who is travailing with you through trying to take more rest days, more clarity, how to be more productive, how to handle life with all these children, plus work, plus um, marriage and all these things. This live is for you and it's for her too. So do me a favor. If you know her, but I don't know her yet, share this video with her so that she can grow with us intentionally, okay? Um, in chapter one of the book, the pastor tells us that, you know, he went through a period in time where the simplest things became challenging. You know, he was working on, uh, really trying to just navigate pastoring his church. He was trying to navigate 
uh, doing all the things, being a family man and having meetings and, you know, being a, a pillar of his Texas community. And he said, all of a sudden, his body hit maxed out. All of a sudden, his body maxed out. And he felt like he was having a breakdown. This strong and stoic man who felt like he could handle anything ended up in a heap and a pile of, of sadness, okay, on his closet floor. And he realized that he had literally been operating in full-fledged turbo for years. That they had pastored their church, I mean, pastor, founded and pastored their church for almost 20 years. And he had not taken any down time. There was a pastor a couple months ago who posted, he said, listen, I officially have reached the end of my rope. I am burned out. He was like, I don't have anything left. Like I just, I'm done. He said, and if I don't make some serious changes soon, he said, I'm worried that one day I'll wake up and I will have had a stroke in my sleep. He said, I feel like I haven't taken any time. I haven't pressed pause, especially pastoring during the pandemic. Some of you guys are mothering during the pandemic and we're still, I don't know if we've ever taken time to pause and say, what have I actually been through? What have I actually struggled with overcoming and navigating so that I can prosper in this next stage in my life? Have I actually taken inventory? Have I even envisioned the trauma of going through everything that we've been through, okay? And so one of the things he does, I'm gonna take the cover off my book. Uh, one of the things that he does in this book is he talks about the signs of emotional exhaustion and burnout. And while I feel like I should know them by heart because I've been teaching them for quite some time, um, it really blessed me. And if you're in our Facebook community or whatever, I just pinned a bunch of posts uh, where they were free master classes, they were a homeschool summit that we did. And then the six signs of emotional burnout, the extended version is up in our Facebook group as well. So you can go there, click on this, like a 45 minute video where I seriously go into the effects of good morning, ladies, good morning, go into the effects of <clears throat> what emotional burnout, emotional exhaustion, overwhelm look like. But every time I teach this, especially when we have new people come on, good morning, Miss Barb, especially as I have new people come on, I want you all to know what it looks like. I want y'all to be able to envision in your mind, am I that person? Am I displaying those signs of toxic tendencies, of my candle is burning out? Am I displaying the signs of being stuck in a certain place or in a zone and I feel like I can't get out of it? Am I going in the circle, right? Can I, am I even identifying that this is me right now? This is who I am right now. Am I burned out? Like you hear people talking about being overwhelmed. You hear people talking about being exhausted beyond measure and all this other stuff. Am I even that person? Am I addicted to being busy? How do I even know? And so in this book, he says that there are six signs, six possible warning signs of burnout or emotional exhaustion. And I might even add one today. Um, he says, sense of failure and self-doubt. If you see yourself and you're not scared, wave your hand at me when I call it out. Wave your hand at me if you can see yourself in some of the things that I'm going to say today. Sense of failure and self-doubt. Feeling helpless, trapped, and defeated. Can life get better? I don't even know. I feel like I'm in a revolving circle. I feel like it's so hard for me to break out of where I was and what I've been doing. Somebody's waving at me in the comments. We see you. Am I that person? Sense of failure and, and self-doubt. I don't even believe in myself that I'm the answer, that I can, that it's possible for me. That could be a sign of burnout. And maybe there's nothing wrong with you. Maybe you're not broken. Maybe, you know, you're just travailing through a period in your life and you're exhausted. 
feeling helpless, trapped, and defeated. Have you ever felt like life can't get better? I don't even know if I'm coming or going. Have you ever felt like I'm in a box and this box is just my life? Y'all saw like the resting face, right? Like this is my resting face. I just look like this now. I'm just exhausted like this all the time. That can be a sign of burnout. Number three, detachment or feeling like you're alone in the world. Wave at me if you felt like that. Let's own up to this. Let's put it out in the light. I got my light out today. Let's put it out in the light and say that this is me and where I am right now. One of my clients said, girl, leave me alone. Get out my business. <laughs> Feeling alone in the world. I'm the only person that's going through this. And what I have found a lot of times, especially when I get on the phone with clients, we always feel like we're the exception. We always feel like I'm the only person that is experiencing this, that is going through this right now. It's just me. My kids are so different. My husband, so different. My home life, so different. I, I'm the rarity. God, God broke the mold after me. <laughs> but the Bible says that there is no sin, no challenge that is only yours. So we can feel alone in the world, but that's not really the case. Hi, Delisha. Good evening or good morning. It's morning. Good morning, everybody. We're talking about signs of overwhelm and burnout and asking ourselves if we're addicted to busy, okay? Number th number four, loss of motivation. You don't even feel like doing nothing. You can't make yourself get out the bed. I was talking with someone today, um, former client, and she was like, I felt motivated, but now I've kind of drifted to a place where I can't make myself do anything. I was like, that's okay, that's normal. And we may not see ourselves as normal because, but it's, it's for everybody. Good morning, Charlotte. Let's go for a ride today together. Let's go for a ride. Loss of motivation. I don't even feel like making myself do the things that I know I need to do. I Listen, your girl, y'all see it? It's coming in just, just a little bit, not a whole lot, but a little, right? Sometimes when I'm in my feelings about certain things, I don't even feel like running, which I know is so good for my mind, body, and spirit. The only way I really drop my weight is by running consistently. That's it. But sometimes when we get exhausted, we don't even want to do the things that we know will help us pull out of our situation. Number five, I'm snatching edges on this one, increasingly cynical or negative outlook. You all have all met people who everything that they say is negative, everything that they associate with negative, everybody, um, you tell them about a situation, they tell you why it won't work. And I dare to say that sometimes we are those people too. We all can be cynical. We all can have a negative outlook on life. Because I've been through so much. I have experienced so much. I have been hurt or rejected so many times that this is now my normal. This is now my normal. So I am always, I'm always looking at the perspective of, is this even going to work? And you tend to take the worst possible outcome versus the best, as my friend Kendall would say. We don't think about all the great things that could happen. Our minds instantly go to this isn't going to work. And we got to take, we got to refresh ourselves so that we're not thinking like this. And then finally, number six is decreased satisfaction and sense of accomplishment. I no longer rejoice in the milestones that I have had because they seem insignificant now. It seems like, you know, is this even for me? All the things that you've done, the places, if you um, started your business in 2020 or 2021 and then you, you uh, pitched yourself for a big opportunity, rejoice that you pitched yourself. Rejoice that you advocated for yourself, that you the business. Y'all know that I, you know, as I work through my essence journey, right, 
In 2020, I was like, Essence should know who I am. 2021, I shot my shot probably twice. 2022, it was just that time. But imagine if I had let my lack of accomplishment feelings, negative outlook, I refuse to be motivated by what I know that we're building here in this community. If I did all of those things, if I just sat there with that negative outlook, right? I never would have made it to that place of being able to work with Essence Magazine, not just once. Not just once, to the place now where I hooked up with somebody uh, on LinkedIn and I was like, do you know so-and-so? She also works in the digital pr production area at, at EMAG. And she was like, no, I don't know her. I said, okay, cool. Well, I'll I'll link y'all. So, so when you do meet her, you can say, Christina told me about. She was like, do you work here? It's like, no. I said, I just like knowing people. <laughs> so, but what we can do is we let our decreased sense of satisfaction, lack of accomplishments, deter us and pull us away from what could be. I never would have had the opportunity to partner with something so incredible if I let that negative outlook sit. And so when we start thinking about signs of burnout and emotional exhaustion, it's like, listen, now I'm cynical. I couldn't see the best in my life if I tried. I'm tired. Some of us, our kids are running buck wild just because we're exhausted. You don't have it in you to get up and say, do right. You don't have it in you to get up and go fix the situation because you're burned out. And so today we're talking about being addicted to busy, to the place where we are now missing out on the beauty of slowing down because we want to keep moving, okay? We want to keep going. So I'm getting ready to turn over to this chapter. And when I say this book changed my life, okay, it really did. Um, he talks about how take, making the Sabbath holy is a forgotten commandment, okay, that we all need to take a rest day where we do nothing. I've had clients who... um. They don't have a rest day plugged in, you know, and I didn't realize I was teaching this before I was officially teaching it, but I was because we all need time to think and to work through our ideas and figure out what feels the most authentic and focused for this season of our lives. At one season in my life, I was mommying small children, right? And although I don't look like it, I am a mom of five, right? So now my oldest son is about to start high school this year, tier. I'm sure he's going to pop up with a girlfriend one of these days. I'm going to have to chase her out of town. But the moral of the story is I'm going into a different stage of motherhood now. I'm going into a different stage of parenting. Me and my husband will hit 16 years of marriage in August. It's a different stage of marriage. That's that stage of marriage where you're like, we can just sit here together. We don't have to talk about nothing. I'm tired of talking. I love you. I think you sexy, but you don't have to touch me. He can say it. I can say it. And nobody's offended. That's a different stage, right? So what he's talking about today is, is really developing and redeeming our time redeeming the definition of work and asking ourselves, are we so addicted to moving around and being busy that we don't know how to breathe and take this time to reset? That's the reason our signature program is called the reset. That's the reason why the coaching program, the group is called the reset. We want you to start over. I want you to literally think about what it would be like if I undid these negative habits these negative tendencies, the negative things that I've allowed and fix it. You can fix it, okay? And so he talks about the forgotten commandment, which is taking the Sabbath, okay? And a lot of times we think about, seven, they, someone asked me, they say, are you a seven-day Adventist? I was like, no, um, but taking Sabbath days are needed. You know, a lot of times we think of it as, um, as a old time, whatever, take your break. Hey, sis, good morning. You know, take your break, take your moment. There should be a day a week where it is plugged in. I'm not putting anything on the agenda. I'm not putting anything on the agenda. And so he says, I can see the thoughts racing through your mind. 
Are you kidding me? I can't do nothing for a day a week. Do nothing for one whole day. When I say the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is go to check my email, go to check social media. You know, that's how my clients reach out to me. I'm going to my email because we're working on some different collaborations. And I'm like, listen, I have not yet gotten tired of seeing Essence in my email. I have not. As soon as I go in there and I see like, I'm like, I haven't got tired. I got to check the email, right? I have to go there. And so it's hard for me on a Sabbath day to say I'm just, I'm minimizing communications. I'm not taking anything on the itinerary unless it's something that's refreshing. Last uh, week, Monday, I went out. One of my good friends, we got brunch and we went for like a four mile walk and just were outside in the sunshine. It felt good. It was on my on my calendar and on my list, but it felt so good. It felt so authentic, you know? So we have to ask ourselves, are we honoring that? And so he says, the fear response is similar to what I encounter in Christians when I talk about tithing. They say, I can't afford to tithe because I'm barely making it as it is. And then we got to challenge ourselves and say, we do the same thing about rest. We do the same thing about niching down in our business. We do the same thing about, you know, how we parent or how we wife or all these things. We say, I can't afford to do this. I can't afford to be vulnerable. I can't afford to parent my children in a more gentle fashion. I ain't say gentle parenting. I said a more gentle fashion. I will still throw a phone flip flop at a child. Let's just get that. I'm not a gentle parent. All right, let me get that together. However, it takes an act of faith to slow down and to embrace that, okay? He says, it's not a law that you have to follow. It's about coming to a place of faith and trust that God is our provider. God is our provider and we can live a lifestyle of rest. No worry, no anxiety, no fear, and no hurried schedules. One of the things that I realized about myself and wave at me in the comments, if you feel this, mamas, wave at me if you feel this. I was always hurrying my children from one thing to another. So at this point, I'm like, okay, how do I need to orchestrate my schedule? How do I need to um, learn to embrace a different time stamp, right? I'm a homeschooling mom. If I'm coaching with y'all all all day, hey, Felicia, if I'm working with y'all all all day, kiki kiki on the internet, when did the children learn? (laughs) <laughs> what are they learning? So after this session this morning, right, we're switching gears and we're going to go to our homeschool schedule and we're going to go to outside time and they're not going to see no tech until this evening. How do I need to set things up differently? How do I need to reorchestrate my time and my strategic planning so that I have space to slow down? The author says that we have no margin anymore. We don't have margin and margin is that white space, that buffering space, right? In between where I am now and where I need to be. That gentle space in between rushing from the doctor to the grocery store, to a a, a coaching appointment or to your clients or to here and here and here. And there's no buffering space in between these areas. So we need to reorchestrate how we do it. I have learned, y'all, I'm I'm telling y'all what I know. You pray, you ask God for these things. And we're going to get to being addicted to busy. But we ask God for these things, right? God says, listen, I want to enlarge your territory. I want to bless you indeed. I want you to operate in your overflow. I want that for you. I want that for you. And so then he gives you, pretend this is your cafeteria plate. He gives you. What you asked for in that fine chocolate, man, honey, girl, go open your phone up. Say, oh, yes, he is fine, right? So you got that fine, man. You got these beautiful kids that you prayed for. You have this bigger house, right, that you asked God for. Y'all remember, my scenery ain't look like this all the time. Well, y'all see the new neighborhood that y'all see me walking in was a prayed for neighborhood. (laughs) Y'all seeing your girl popping up in some new places. Yes, I recorded with Essence on the Sabbath because that was God's promise. 
right? I knew that was coming and I knew I was supposed to say yes. So we have all these things that God is put, that God said, you asked for this here, 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 here. All these things on this plate now or calendar. He gave it to you. And so now you have to do the strategic work of organizing the life that you prayed for. I asked for this. Thank you, God, that you gave it to me. Now, how do, what do I need to do? What time do I need to get up? Who do I need to reach up, out to and follow up with? What are these things that I need to move around so that this is working, okay? And so he talks about the forgotten commandment I see my kid outside. The forgotten commandments of taking the day off and talks about how serious God is about our rest. Okay. He says, God did not change his thoughts on killing. God didn't change what he thought about lying and stealing. What makes us think that he changed his mind about us taking a day off? What made us think that God has changed his mind about us taking this day? And the reason that we need to take the day, he talks about the Israelites and how Jesus was supposed to come through this lineage. And if they were worn out, burned out, stressed out, overwhelmed, if everything that was attached to them was deteriorating, Jesus could not come through a healthy and vibrant lineage. What about your lineage? I know, I know, I, I'm coming, my edges are shaved, so I'm good this morning. What about your kids? What about your legacy? What about the work that you're called to do in this world? What about your purpose that is uniquely given to you? What about the light that you have shining inside of you that we need? Imagine, if y'all could think back, Mamathon 2000. 14. 2016 is not the Christina that y'all see now. If I did not intentionally choose to go after that better sense of self-care and self-awareness and start on the vision, if I was not intent to start on my vision, what God dropped inside of me, my husband, I would be so just beat down. I'm talking about, I was making motherhood look bad. <laughs> And my husband would say to me, baby, God's doing something in you. God's doing something in you that maybe it's, it's going to become something. And I was like, whatever. No, it's not. And look at us now. Look at us now. So we have to remember our legacy is tied to our rest. Somebody put that in the comments for me. Our legacy is tied to our rest. It's tied to our rest, to doing the things that feed us, okay? And so he says that we are chronically addicted to being busy. He says it's more about allowing ourselves to be pulled in a dozen different directions all the time, every day. We have demanding full-time jobs plus countless other things that vie for our attention. If you're Miss Barbie, you actually have the book. I'm on page 28. He says we are chronically unendingly, terminally busy. Unendingly busy. Have you ever said to yourself, you know what? Next week, I'll chill. And then something swoops in and takes up the space for next week. He says, busyness is often more than a mere habit. In fact, for many people, it's an addiction. Now you can wave at me. Let's just be honest. When I first started implementing Sabbath days into our week, it was so hard. It's still hard to not do all of the normal things that I do, to not be live because I love going live, to not follow up with clients on a Monday. Even my assistant yesterday, she, she emailed me in the evening and she was like, I didn't want to email you early in the day because I know that that's your Sabbath time. Like, I know this is your rest day and you like to have some downtime, okay? Good afternoon, everybody. Well, still morning here. Good morning. We're talking about being addicted to being busy today and how that inhibits us from operating at our fullness, okay? He says, this addiction is one that's as powerful and controlling as any addiction to alcohol or drugs. 
The difference is that our culture still frowns upon being addicted to chemicals. But actually encourages and rewards our addiction to being hurried and overscheduled. We actually encourage people to be overwhelmed. We encourage them to be chronically busy. We say, listen, you should be moving all the time. You want to know something that's hard? Let me tell y'all something. Now we take Sabbath days. The Bible says, if I can find it really quick, he talks about you need to take a day off. Your cattle and sheep need to take a day off. Your mama, cousin, sister, brother, everybody. Y'all hear me? Everybody takes the day off. Even the kids. Now, listen, the first couple Sabbaths, I was chilling. But y'all can still clean up that kitchen. (laughs) Y'all can still do blah, blah, blah. And it was even hard for me to let my children have a day where they didn't have anything on the schedule. That's my humanity showing. I'm going to keep it real. I can take a day because I actually need the day. What y'all need a day off for? And the Bible even says that the kids should be able to chill. That was hard for me. That was hard for me. What y'all need a day off for? I'm working on it. I'm a work in progress. Hallelujah. He says, the difference is our culture still frowns upon being addicted to chemicals, but actually encourages and rewards our addiction to being hurried and overscheduled. There's no negative social stigma associated with being busy. There's no negative social stigma associated with being busy. Like think about it. I listen to Eric Thomas and, you know, some of these other folks. You got to want it bad as you want to breed, da, da, da. You will be in the grave trying to hurry up and get there, trying to hurry up and be this person, all this kind of stuff. And literally my husband said one day he was challenging E.T. Thomas was challenging everybody to get up at three and do all this stuff. My my husband said, one day, babe, I watched a replay. He said, he looks so worn out. He looks so exhausted. You could tell he needed sleep. But the grind, the hustle. And listen, I'm not retired like his wife is, right? All these things. But I'm just saying, like, at what point do we say, Okay, I need to fine tune this, all right? He says, most drug addicts and alcoholics are in denial. But busy addicts own it proudly. In fact, a 2019 survey revealed that nearly half of Americans actually consider themselves workaholics. And more than half of the people who took the survey said they were feeling stressed out from work as they were taking the survey. He says these people were likely not confessing something that they were ashamed of. Instead, he supposes they were actually bragging that they, I want to be this person. And so the question that the author poses to us is, is too much of this a good thing? Is this too much of a good thing? The Bible talks about how, you know, if you're, if you don't take care of your home, if you're not this person, you're worse than an unbeliever. And none of us want to look like we're, we don't even believe in God because we're lazy. We read Proverbs and it talks about, you know, harvest time and sowing. And we don't want to go back out to our pasture and there's nothing there because I didn't put anything in the ground. All of this kind of stuff. So we are chronically busy. When I was talking with, um, one of the writers at Essence last week. And I was like, you know, we don't build any margin in anymore for these slow and methodical conversations that we need to have with our family members. We don't even have time because we feel like our children need to be in every sport. They need to be in every activity. Not to mention if your child has counseling or therapy or uh, IEP or all these other extra things that they might need. We're chronically going, 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 and we're proud of it. Oh, yeah, my son is in. Oh, yeah, my son is in um, uh, basketball, soccer, uh, football, baseball, and in the summer, he swims. (laughs) In the summer, he swims, 
and you're like, and mama got bags on her eyes, you know, and then, and then here's what y'all do. I'm talking about y'all. I'm talking, I'm sorry. I love y'all. Then y'all gaze off into the sun and like, I sure do wish I had some time for myself. You put your kids in all this stuff. We're not talking about the things they need to be at, right? We're not talking about the stuff where they need to, you know, my uh, seven-year-old son, he's going to start speech therapy this summer, right? We're not talking about the things that they need to be at. We're talking about the wants that become a need because we want to be the best parent we can. We want to become the best parent that we can. So we give, 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 and realize we can't take a nap. Miss Barb said, we signed them up. You signed your freedom away. <laughs> you put it on, doo -doo -doo. you know, and then we don't even make our children operate in clarity. I know I'm coming. I know. I know I'm really mean today. I'm sorry. I love y'all. We don't even make our children operate in clarity to say, what is your passion? What do you really love doing? And what do you just kind of like? Mostly because we don't even do it for ourselves. We don't even do it for ourselves, y'all. We don't even tell ourselves, what do I really love? And what do I just kind of like? Like for Christina, this year, my focus for my business has been speaking and media. And in the midst of that, I've been working with some really brilliant, dynamic, epic women who are changing the world in their own special way, right? In the midst of all of these things, what do I love doing? What do I love doing? I don't love sending emails. I don't love certain social media, but I love moments like this. So how do I orchestrate my life so I'm doing more moments like this? And some of us are so addicted to moving. Some of us have low clarity on our own ideas and what we're supposed to be doing. We're celebrating the burnout. We're celebrating the grind. And then we sign our children up and teach them to be the same way. We tell our children, this is how you're supposed to live, rushing from one place to another. And then when it comes time to talk to our children about relationships and what it looks like to be in a healthy relationship, sex, pornography, drugs, uh, who you love and who's okay to love and all these conversations, God's biblical um principles on x y and z we don't have any time for these conversations because there's no white space and no margin there's no space because we don't even operate in clarity ourselves so we can't teach our children to do it we signed them up for the stuff we put them in the stuff and then wonder why you and your husband are pa ooh, are passing each other like ships in the night. You ain't had sex since you don't know when. I know. I love y'all. I'm sorry. I'm gonna turn the page. I'm gonna turn the page. You ain't even. You ain't even getting. getting your, are you married? You ain't even getting yours. <laughs> Cause everything is always so busy. By the time y'all are together, you sleep. So then by the time life calms down and the children are off doing their own thing, y'all are looking at each other like, who are you? Because we have filled our lives. We have filled our lives with so much busyness and clutter. We don't even understand fully what it is that we need to be doing for ourselves. We don't understand what we really need for ourselves. We are addicted to being busy and then we make our children the same way. There's no negative stigma that's associated with being addicted to the grind. There's no negative stigma that comes with, baby, you know, E.T., Monday, I grind. Tuesday, I grind. Wednesday, I grind. I show up. I show up. I show up. I'm doing all these things. I'm doing it all day. I'm staying up late. I'm waking up in the morning. I'm doing everything. I'm doing everything. And even I had to lessen how much I listened to that podcast. Number one, because how many times can you listen to rich men talk about how they retired their wives and you still working, <laughs> right? I've been a stay-at-home mom for years, right? So, you know, it's not necessarily something that has uh, always, you know, we've been blessed through my husband's business, right? That I didn't have to rush to work. You feel me? However, 
that's not a mentality. You know, oh, listen, I, I just changed my life. In your mind, you are forgetting about uh, all the times he was like, I was sleeping at, on her couch and in her basement and I just refused to go to work. Oh, I'm sorry. No, we don't have that problem. <laughs> we don't have that problem in the Gary house. Okay. My husband was like, baby, you ain't never had it that bad. And I was like, you know what? There's no need for me to keep listening to this podcast over and over again. It's unhealthy at a certain point to say, I'm just going to keep going, keep doing. So he says, we can have too much of a good thing, but we celebrate the grind instead of celebrating strategic planning. On top of that, there's only so much listening to men talk about how to grind. And we, when we're women who carry the majority of the child care, the majority of, you know, the family management, the household management, stuff like that. We carry the majority of that. My husband works outside the home. I work from home and homeschool our five children. Some days he walks in the house, the house is spotless and got candles burning. Some days he walks in, it looks like the house burned down. It just depends. But we have very different lifestyles and and how we celebrate each other all these kind of things that we do our best not to do the comparison game felicia you know it's true <laughs> some days it's like you know what i had clients i would homeschool the kids in the morning clients all afternoon and i went for a run ain't no dinner bring wings it happens it happens. So it's only so much listening to men talk about how to be productive and how to hustle and how to grind because y'all ain't washing the laundry. You're not doing all the ins and outs while you go and travel everywhere and you living your best life and doing all the stuff and speaking all the and doing all the blah, blah, blah. Your wife is at home. I want to talk to her. I want to talk to her who was at the house with the kids while you went because you wanted it so bad you want you could you wanted to breathe. That's what I want to talk to. That's what I want to talk to. Okay. So we never want to look like we are lazy and efficient. So sometimes we can go too far to the other side of the coin. We can go too far to the other side. Okay. So learning how to embrace rest does a few things. Number one, it gives us the ability to fulfill our requirements. OK, like I just said, it's only so much listening to men <laughs> talk about how to be productive and how to hustle. I'm like all the women here in this space, you know who I'm talking to, where you got the children, you dressing kids, trying to get them to doctor's appointments on time. You could be homeschooling. You may run a business from your house. You have to uh, orchestrate family management. You are doing all these things like you are legit a multitasking superhero and men carry their own personal mental load but i'm not talking to them today i'm talking to my sisters i'm talking to these brilliant dope women i'm talking to the brilliant superhero moms who are out here doing a million things for a million people and then we got to ask ourselves am i getting the rest orchestrating my ideas? Am I working on my way of changing the world in the right way? Okay. So learning how to embrace rest gives me the ability to fulfill my requirements for the next day. When I go to bed on time, I wake up on time. I'm able to sort through the stuff in the house. I might roll my eyes a little bit when I see certain things in my children, but you know what? Y'all make me sick, but I just handle, I'm more in a space to handle certain things. Okay. I'm also able to coach and work, show up online, right? Partnering with you guys. I'm able to do that from an energetic place because I really do love y'all and I love what I do. When you embrace rest, you give a chance for your body and your soul to catch up. There's a book that we have that I've been talking about called Sleep Smarter, right? And in this book, he talks about why you need to uh, close out get some blackout curtains and close, turn all the lights off and shut everything down at a certain time because we need to be in tune with our bodies and our minds and our spirits, okay? He says that the majority of our melatonin is made in our gut. So he talks about how, you know, listen, eat healthy. He said eating healthy and doing good by your body means you'll sleep better. And when you wake up in the morning, you literally do feel like a new person. Learning to rest also lessens the effects of stress on the body. 
okay less is the effects of stress on the body okay so you can imagine all our hormones and you know the things that need to be reset as a result of of us taking that time and actually you know downscaling some things i was reading a book and y'all know we read a lot of books there's a book called sleepyhead i cannot remember the name of the author but he talks about how when you go more than two nights of jagged sleep you know up down up down it literally takes you three days of consecutive good sleep right your full amount of time to reset your hormones you got one or two nights of bad sleep you have to get three days of good sleep in order to reset the thousands y'all hear me thousands of hormones that are flowing through our bodies and so what i immediately went to was what about moms what about moms have any of us even slept a whole night since children <laughs> And so instantly we started changing the way our house functioned, right? And I've been talking to my clients about this, how, the way our home functions so that I rest, the kids rest, you know, making the house darker, closing everything down at night. My client Lou, she was like, I can't even remember when I just slept good. You know, like that, I ate good. Maybe you had sex. And then you went to sleep. We call that the trifecta. That's like I had a really stressful day, food, sex, sleep, right? Charlotte says moms with special needs kids, right? Where your children have a different type of need and you got to be responsive. I know for a fact, I would hear a child, I have a automatic like body roll out of the bed, land on my feet like a cat and then just go check on whatever child it is. Instantly, my mom was like, how can what we do here help y'all rest better? Instantly, my mind went there. How do we how do we change how we talk about our framework, right? Our framework here is the four pillars of productivity, right? Creating your family vision, what's really important. Like we go into all of that. Creating your family vision, communicating your needs to your loved ones. If I go more than two nights without good sleep, I feel physically sick. I have to go to bed. That's self-awareness. Hey, why does my stomach feel queasy? I ain't slept good the last three nights. Baby, I need to go to sleep. Communicating those needs to our loved ones. How can I support you? And this is the kind of support that I need. We go into that as a client. And then we delegate our unnecessary tasks, right? So then we talk about how do I do less so that I'm more efficient in the time I do have. And then finally, we alleviate our stress and our overwhelm through better self-care, right? By doing more of the things that speak life and vibrancy to us. That's the Christina productivity framework, right? And it looks different for everybody because everyone's season is different, but the pillars work for everyone. So what he's saying is it learn to embrace rest. If I create a vision, if I communicate what I need to my loved ones, if I delegate i have space to work on my ideas to pray about what god is saying is next because boy these garrett's got some stuff we are praying about y'all hear me we just got stuff that we're praying about so having that downtime to really work through that and so what he says is that we're always thinking about planning for looking forward or not looking forward to work we're always investing ourselves in what is that next thing is always kind of building up our time and so and we're gonna get ready to wrap up in the next five minutes he says a lot of times we have noble motives but we're out of balance we have noble motives but we're out of balance he says choosing to the, obey the command to rest is a step of faith Choosing to obey the command to rest is a step of faith comparable to giving God the first 10% of your income. It requires trust in God to supernaturally help you fulfill all your responsibilities in the six remaining days each week. And I'm here to tell you 
that he will do that. I have testified multiple times over the last couple of weeks about amazing things that happened on Sabbath days. Just weird stuff. Like, you know, just stuff that we have been praying about or whatever and trying to learn how to slow down and chill, right? God says one day a week, I want you to chill. And then he says the other six days, I want you to go hard in the paint, right? I want you to show up and deliver and work hard and, and give your all to the things that are in task to you. I think one problem is sometimes we will, we will call something, I'm resting, I'm practicing self-care, but baby, that's not your Sabbath day. <laughs> that is not your Sabbath day. Whatever day you say is your Sabbath day, make that your Sabbath day. Okay? And then on the days that is, this is your other six days, what are you doing with your time? Why are we not executing well? Why are you not showing up strong for your family? Why are you not or taking a few minutes and organizing that space that has been bothering you? Why are you not teaching your children how to support around the house? Why are we not fully engaged in what we say is our passion project? Why are you not reaching out to people and telling them about what you do? Why are you not showing up here in living color to talk about why what you do changes the world? Where are you at? And specifically, I'm talking to those women who have a big vision, big ideas, bossy mentality. You want to slay in your family, but you also want to fully walk to your glow and your purpose and the things that God has put in your heart to do. I'm talking to you. So what we want to do is when we feel tired, it's not your Sabbath day. I just want to, I just need self-care time. I just need some downtime. I need some breathing space. And the days that you're supposed to be showing up, and writing or working on your blog or pitching your event planning services or talking about your translation services or doing all these other things. We're not doing that then either. On the other six days, you make it work. You hustle, you handle business. But on that Sabbath day, God says, chill. And trust, oh my God, and trust that the seeds that you put in the ground on these other days are enough that you can take the day off. Somebody give a glory. Oh, my word. That is good. I'm going to go hard in the paint these other six days. I'm going to send out my information for speaking engagements. I'm going to pitch my local TV. I'm going to, listen, y'all, I, I pitched Steve Harvey on Watch. I pitched the Drew Barrymore Show, all these other places. Why? Because I'm larger than charge and the whole world should know, right? Strategic planning for busy women is what I do, P period. <laughs> the sooner you know it, the sooner you glow in it, the better we all will be, okay? So I, Christina, that's what I'm working on on these other six days, showing up with my clients, right? Coaching in the afternoons, discovery calls. Let's set up a 10-minute time to chat. Let's see if I'm your person and you're my person, and I can help you Set up a plan for your family so you can glow and you're on the to-do list just like everybody else is. Whereas you look at this full and blossoming abundant plate of things that you prayed for. Now we got to move some of this stuff around because the way that I'm doing it right now has me hiding in the shower crying, has me hiding in my closet eating snacks because you have no boundaries. So that's what I do. I'm the bridge in between, right? So the moral of the story is this, really embracing that resting is an act of faith, that God is working when I'm not, that my job is on these other six days to sow seeds and trust that as I rest on the Sabbath day, that God is bringing up those things that I have that I have put out into the world. It's not a permission for us to say, you know what, I'm good. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. No, no, no. Those other six days, we need you to show up. We need you to start. We need you to take care of yourself. We need you to handle these family conversations. These other six days, we look at how we can build margin into our families. 
We look at how we can level up and show up and do things that matter. Those other six days, we say, okay, here's my, my checklist of stuff that I got to do every day. I'm either sending an email or I'm going to be live. I'm either coaching or I'm doing a discovery call. What I'm, am I, did you pitch the media today? Did you send a follow-up email to that? What does that look like for you? That's Christina's to-do list. What does it look like for you? What does it look like for you as a woman, as a wife, as a mom, as a dream builder? What does that look like? And how can we infuse more rest, more margin into our day-to-day -day lives and stop being so addicted to being busy, okay? So as we wrap up our hour together, I want to extend an invitation to you, okay? Let's say you've been on this live all this time. Christina's been talking about rest and clarity, how to work on our brilliant ideas without feeling burned out. I've been talking about the six stages or six signs of emotional overwhelm and burnout, and you can see yourself you see yourself in this and you're like, I know I need help. I know I need somebody to walk with me that understands where I've been. Y'all, I'm a pastor's wife. I'm a homeschooling mom of five awesome kids. Have my children come in here one time? Not saying they never will. But have my kids come in here one time since we started this live and we've been on here an hour. OK, so the moral of the story is really working on instituting an intentional plan. No more fly by night. No more being reactive versus proactive. No more knowing, um, knowing that you need to slow down and be more intentional, but you don't know how to do that. We don't want to sit here in that space. And then beyond that, I want to push you to take those ideas, focus them. Right. We want to focus those ideas into what is going to create legacy goals. What goals are going to change the dynamic of my family life? I don't want to sit here and look up a year from now and realize I'm in the same place. No. No, we don't have time. Life is short. Our missions are, are waiting on us. The world is waiting on a way that you bring something epic about God to the world. We're looking for it. We want it. We're craving it. OK, so if you would like a partner to walk with you through this process, I invite you to set up a 10 minute call with me. 10 minutes. Right. We'll go through. We'll talk about are we a good fit to work together? OK, listen, I, I might be your person. You might be mine, but maybe now is not the time. So what we do is we'll talk about you, especially what your current challenges are. You can tell me about your family, what's working in that dynamic and what's not. And then beyond that, we can decide if you would like to join with me in a six-week coaching partnership where you have a five, a, a BFF and coach to walk with you through a strategic process that will help you put yourself back on the to-do list and orchestrate your ideas and your family management into a plan that works, okay? So if that's you, I want to say on Facebook, uh, the link is in the caption. If you're on the business page or on Instagram, the Momathon Diaries, slide into my DMs, ask for the link, okay? And then we will set up a time for us to get to know each other better and chat some more, okay? That's it for today. I love y'all something serious. I hope my passion and oomph today showed you how loved you really are. If no one else has told you yet today, you are special, you are brilliant. God has great plans for you, and we are excited to see what you bring to the world in your own epic way, okay? I look forward to chatting with you guys, uh, either on Zoom or in Messenger. Have an amazing, have an amazing Tuesday, all right? Bye.